Hello and welcome to the Life United YouTube channel. We're so excited and we're so glad that you've tuned in for this special New Year's Eve service. You know, pastor's been doing this message, doing this service uh, every year now, and it's so powerful. And this one is just as powerful as the others. You know, we always celebrate what God has done in this year. In 2020, he did some incredible things, but we're also looking forward to what he's going to do in 2021. So join us right now as we go in with pastor for this incredible New Year's Eve service. Join us right now. The face of the world will dramatically change in the near future. Wars and natural disasters will scar and disfigure every continent. Morality of rights will supersede the morality of right and wrong. Values will be perverted to inclusiveness instead of righteousness. Many fears will be revealed in this season and many false promises made to alleviate those fears. The climate for the gospel will change as people become desperate for answers. Many afflicted with devastating disease will hear of the healing Jesus and will be healed by the simple faith-filled prayers of the saints. Amen. Who will answer the call and set aside things of no value for the value of the cross? Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, welcome our Lake Charles campus. They're watching tonight. Give them a big hand tonight. Glad to have them with us tonight. Praise God. I want to just share with you, um, I've been doing this for a number of years now on New Year's Eve, and, and most of you already know uh, all about it, but just in case you don't, many, many years ago now, in the 90s, my, one of my mentors, Dr. Lester Sumrall, um, I traveled with him and was able to be with him in many different settings and, and uh, traveled with him overseas and on missions trips and, and uh, was around him quite a bit. And, and the Lord every new year would give him a series of things for the next year or for the coming years. And he called it, I predict. And so I, I man, I couldn't wait every year, man. I, I've got, he put it in a little booklet and I couldn't wait to get those little booklets. And it was amazing over the years, how all of that just transpired. And so when he passed away, about a year or so later, I'm, I'm praying one day in, in October, I think it was, all of a sudden the Lord started speaking these things to me and telling me to write them down. And, and, and I'm saying, okay, man, I'm writing them down. And, and the next thing you know, I have got all these things and the Lord said, now you share that New Year's Eve. And so that's how it started. Uh, and I, it was interesting. I believe that that spirit of that, that just kind of fell on me and not only me, but there are other ministers as well that that, that happened to. And, uh, and so every year, usually beginning in October and November, the Lord starts speaking to me. I spend extra time in prayer and because and, I want to hear and, and, and the Lord starts speaking to me. This year, was the first time in over 20 something years now that the Lord started speaking to me in the middle of the year. And, and, and I, if you've watched online, uh, we were doing online services. In fact, some of that was from online that you saw. Uh, those are things that the Lord spoke in the middle of the year. And it's amazing how They've already started coming to pass. Now, just so you understand, I'm not bragging, okay? Because I, I actually, to be honest with you, I, I just write it down. Some of the time I say, Lord, do I, I, do, you really, do I have to say that? I mean, to be honest with you, some of the things I'm just not too thrilled about saying it tonight especially. But I really believe it's the Holy Spirit, and it's proven out over the years. In fact, several people, it's interesting, it almost... Uh, every year, several people will send me newspaper clippings with that, with one of the I predicts of, and, and how it came to pass and, and that type of thing. So uh, as the years have gone by, I just, I just get ready and I pray. And again, I, I uh, want to encourage you, go back to the ones in, that I, their own line that I, I ministered in, in May 
and, and because they're still starting to come to pass, and I'm going to mention a couple of them uh, tonight. Um, it's interesting because everyone wants to know the future. But let me tell you, just because you know the future doesn't mean it's going to affect your life. I mean, you can know the future. Uh, when all this started happening back in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the spring, uh, uh, Pastor John and I were talking, and he said that there were a lot of young pastors that just wanted to have a Zoom meeting and, and talk about it. And, man, I'll tell you, it was amazing the things the Lord gave me that I shared with them, and I've shared them since uh, over time with the church. Um, because they wanted to know what it meant in the future. And I'm thinking, you know, just because I'm telling these guys doesn't mean they're going to do anything about it. Some do, some don't. Uh, the Pharisees continually heard about the future. Continually. They knew what was going to happen, yet they totally missed it. And that ought to put fear in you. And I'm in a, in a good sense. That ought to put the fear of God in you. To know that you could know what's going to happen and yet not see it and be deceived by it. And so I'm, I, I, a couple of things the Lord showed me I'm going to share along that line. Normally the Lord gives me this in, in, in two basic areas, the church and the world. But I got to tell you, this year has been totally different. And, and uh, several men of God that, that I run these things by and talk to about them because, you know, I, I certainly uh, am open for, you know, uh, correction on anything. And anybody can miss it. But um, they, keep, they ask me, well, what are you getting? And I said, well, to be honest with you, it's not anything near what I used to have been getting. And it's not even the same vein almost as, as in years past. And, and they said, well, you know, that's kind of what the Lord's doing with me, saying just dif different things, strange things. Um, and so... What I'm going to share with you tonight is going to sound a little preachy because well, I guess it is to some degree, but, but there are specific things um, that, uh, that the Lord wants, wants me to share with you. Um, it, it's not as much uh, context of natural as it is spiritual actions in the midst of change. And, um, you know, normally, like I said, the Lord will show me different things about things in the world and, and that type of thing. And, um, in fact, a couple of them years ago, I remember, I wish I had to listen to myself. Uh, uh, you know, it was talking about uh, oil and different things like that and what was going to happen. And I said, I could have bought stock, or I, you know, but I didn't, you know. But, but the thing that I want you to understand is that I believe with all my heart that we're moving into a new a new se season of, of the world. And, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Now, you know, we're Americans. <laughs> we can do anything. You know, we can stop anything. We can stop a freight train. Well, you can't stop God. Okay. And, and I do believe there are things that we can manage. I believe we can restrain I believe we can, but, but there are certain things that you've got to understand and realize. You can't say, well, I, you know, what did we do wrong? Well, you, probably, you didn't do anything wrong. You just got to understand that. You got to know that. And you've got, you've got to be careful that you don't blend your, um, your American freedom with Jesus. Okay, thank God we are free. I'm here preaching tonight. Amen. Okay, I'm free. I have a right to be here. I have, there are rights that tell me I have a right to be here and vocally communicate with you the gospel. I have a right to that. Okay, but the bottom line is that, and you say, well, that's from God. Well, then most of the world doesn't have it. <laughs> I, I, I believe, there's no question in my mind, I believe God raised this nation up, nor do I believe God's through with this nation. But I do believe that we are moving into a different season of, of time, uh, and you better get used to it. And quit complaining about it. Get on your knees and pray and say, God, what's my next move? What do I do next? And I believe if you do that, you'll stay on track. And the other thing you need to do is you need to listen to your pastor. 
Hey, I, I, I'm serious. That's another thing about Americans. They don't like what you're saying today. They go find somebody to, that they like. Well, the Bible talks about that. You might want to go read about it. Okay. Now, look, I know people make mistakes, and like I said, anybody can miss it. But bottom line, you need a shepherd. Thank you for those amen. 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 So let me just kind of start with this because this is kind of this is kind of where the Lord started with me with this. I normally don't do these by when he gives them to me. I'll try to put them in context of where we are. But the, one of the first things when I was praying, uh, I heard this by the Spirit of God. Instead of the joys of a new year, there will be tolling bells of the mournful. Yeah. Tolling bells of the mournful. Well, the good news is he can turn our mourning into dancing. Woo! Glory to God. But, you know, listen to me. Uh, uh, the world's struggling. And, and, and this, this, this year, you don't have a bunch of people out there counting down till the ball falls and kissing everybody. And, you know, the, the, the world's struggling. Amen? But, but listen to me. Just because that's happening doesn't mean it has to affect you or your life. But I can just tell you there are, there are bells of the mournful that are, are tolling. The second thing the Lord said to me was this, new year, new fear. You better know how to fight fear in your life. Fear is not of God. You Listen, you do not have to be afraid. Well, what if I get COVID? Well, you're going to get sick, probably. Well, what if I die? Well, you're going to go to heaven. Now, I know you may feel in the middle of that. I know a number of people I've looked around and had COVID, and it's not any fun, and I'm not mocking it. Don't misunderstand me. But what I am saying is that even in the midst of any, the most dire circumstance, you can't fear. You can't live your life in fear. You can't live that way. You can't operate that way because, listen, there's more coming. There's more fear coming. And, and I, I'm going to tell you, um, you, you just need to, be, you, you need to be ready for it. Peace and safety will be the cry of the new year, but it will be met with violence and fear. Violence and fear. So just so you know, uh, I know that sounds awfully bad and awfully negative. Well, you know why? Because it's going to be that way. And I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not happy about telling you that. But listen, you better be ready. You can be ready for it. You can be a person of faith. You can live a life of faith. You can see God do stuff in the midst of any, any adversity, any difficulty. If, if Go back and listen to the Christmas message I preached about the, the, the circumstances of Jesus' birth and what was going on around Jesus at his birth and how bad it was. Right. To be honest with you, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't matter to God. I, one, of my, one of my friends, Terry Myers, we've been friends for many years. He's a missionary and, and he was talking to uh, uh, this, this uh, person and and they were talking about, well, God wants me happy. And Terry looked at him and said, God doesn't give a rip whether you're happy or not. <laughs> he doesn't care whether you're happy. Doesn't mean he doesn't want you to have joy in your life. But it's not his job to make you happy. And that's not one of my points, but it's good preaching anyway. I'm probably not going to get to all this tonight. I'm going to have to go start, do more on Sunday. But, but anyway, um, so peace and safety will be the cry of the new year, but it'll be met with violence and fear. Even with the hope of America getting back to normal, it will not belay the fear. Okay? It will not belay the fear. There is an insidious plot of the devil to interject fear into this nation, to bring this nation down to its knees. It couldn't do it through wars. It couldn't do it uh, uh, through, through uh, 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 communism. So it's going to try to do it through fear. So listen to me. You don't have to be afraid. You are not born as a child of God to be fearful. 
So uh, it's going to belay the fears, and the fear of the future will grip America. So you better be ready. You know you can be that hope. You can be that beacon. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, maybe. You can be that hope. You can be that beacon of hope. Everybody else is in fear. Everybody, oh my God, this is how, all these bad things. And you can give them hope. Unless you don't have any. If you don't, you might want to get back in your Bible. No natural cure for the fear will be found and it will cause many to spiral into an abyss of immorality. It's interesting, listen, it's interesting when you, when you watch fear grip someone, it will drive them into immorality. A lot of times it'll drive them into doing stuff they in a million years would never think they would do. But I just believe it's not going to be the church. The church is not going to do that. We're going to rise up in Jesus' name. Amen. Fits of convulsion will grip the world as the earth and sky groan for the revealing of the sons of God. Do you know that the earth is waiting for us? It says over in Romans chapter 8, the, war, the earth is groaning and travailing, waiting for us to be revealed. And it's getting worse. And it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Now, I'm not getting very many amens, but I just want you to know, I have to tell you, this was not an easy message. I had to pray a lot to get this out in, in my heart in a positive way. Because, I look, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. I want you to hear. Because you already know, if you don't, then I don't know, you're living in a cocoon that, that things are affecting every part of everybody's life. It, it's affecting everything. You can't hide from it. Well, this group over here, they're not, they're, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not an issue with them. Show me that group. There's no such group. If the president of the United States can get that virus, listen to me. You know that there is a dark enemy working. And I do believe that that's, that virus has a spirit attached to it. And I believe it's attracted to fear. So fits of convulsion will grip the world as the earth and sky groan for the revealing of the sons of God. Event after event will, st the, uh, will keep the world stirred up. See, we're thinking we're going to get past this. Man, we can take our trip to Paris or we can go do this or we can go do that. Let me tell you something. Event after event. So what are those events? I don't know. I don't know. But event after event is going to keep the world stirred up. It's almost like you catch your breath and something else happens. It may not affect you personally, but it's out there. So you've got to get your faith on the line. You've got to get yourself in line with, with the Lord. And, and, and if you do that, I believe God can do something great for you. There were three things that the Lord specifically gave me about the world, and I'm going to interject them right here because that's all I've got in regard to that, okay? And, and the first one is this. New worker revolutions will push for equal pay with people who have earned degrees and earned their way into their jobs. That's called communism. But listen to me. You're going to find people thinking they deserve, just because they breathe, the same pay that somebody else worked a half a lifetime for. Okay. So just, just, just get ready for that push. Second thing, these are three, just three things. Second thing, high tech will see a transition 
as people demand transparency. I'm going to tell you something. The devil overplayed his hand in some of these areas. Overplayed his hand. And people are not going to stand for it. All right. Third thing. The evolution of communications. Now don't ask me what this means because I do not know. The evolution of communications will go backwards in a demand for simplicity. I am so stinking tired of messing with my iPhone and my iPad and and I know Chad's getting tired of it because I'm calling him all the time. <laughs> well, but the younger generation, they want all that stuff. Listen to me. I'm just telling you. People are going to demand. We're, we're going to see a demand in technology for simplicity. So if you've got an idea that makes te te technology more simple, you could be a wealthy person. So if you've got an idea, go for it. So those are the only three things in context of the world that the Lord gave me this year out of all the things. Uh, I, I could talk to you some things about Israel. I'm not going to do that today, uh, tonight. I may do that later uh, that the Lord showed me, but I didn't feel like it was, should be part of this. So now let me jump back in because we talked about all the, new, all the negative, all the bad, okay, and, and, and all the things that, that, that I believe the Lord's saying. And let me just tell you, okay, just so you'll know, I, I, I talk to other men of God, and I know I've said this, but I want to say it again, uh, about these things, and, and, and I'm open for correction, and, and I'm hearing the same thing. Now, there is another stream of thought, oh, everything's going to be great, God's going to work, I mean, Trump's going to get elected, and everything's going to be wonderful. Listen to me, listen to me. I just want to caution you. Don't get tied up in that. If that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you're a child of God. Okay? You're a child of God. And you've got to live your life on that way. Well, I, I want Biden to be in. Well, good for you. God bless you. Pray for him. He's going to need it. Every president needs it. But the point is, you've got to hear what I'm saying tonight. You know, you've got to understand who you are, okay? If you want to live your life pursuing, this is way off, this is not part of this, but just listen. If you want to live your life pursuing social, societal things and, and, and give your life to that at the expense of your spiritual life, you're going to be in trouble, Okay? You're going to be in trouble. There, there, I'm just telling you, you, you've got to be careful with that. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. De listen, doesn't mean there's not unrighteousness in the world. Doesn't mean that we as Americans should not address it and be open as Christians when another a Christian and another brother is hurting. But you've got to be careful where you pick your fights. Because you can get caught up in stuff and you can miss out on what the Lord wants. All right, listen to this. This, this is the second part of this. And um, I don't even know how long I've been talking here, but anyway, okay. The Lord spoke this to me, and he said, I'm giving America a space of repentance. Will they repent, or will they be as Esau, who could find no place of repentance? It's interesting in Hebrews that Esau couldn't find a place of repentance. It literally means he could not make himself repent. Could not make himself repent. It's a pretty scary place to be. Now, I'm not looking, listen, I'm not looking for the lost to repent. They don't know what they're to repent. They need Jesus. I'm talking about a lot of the church. Okay. Society in America is being recalibrated to
to fit the Antichrist structure. Okay? Now, you better hear what I'm saying. That's what's happening. You better listen to me. That's what's happening. You've got to understand that. You've got to know that. Because as a child of God, you can't be part of that restructuring. That's not where you live. Where do you live? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 tells us. Listen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. You're going to put that up. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I beg you. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Let me put it to you another way. It's the least you can do for what God's done for you. Now listen to the next verse. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that you as an individual may prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God for your life. That's your wheelhouse. That's where you live. That's how you have to live. That's how you operate. The church, this is the next point, must answer a call to holiness. Let me tell you something. You better make up your mind. You can't live any way you want to live and think everything's okay. I'm just telling you, it ain't going to work. You can't do that. First John says, if a man knows what to do and doesn't do it, it's what? It's sin. You know better. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to about they've gotten themselves in trouble and gotten into sin. They knew what they were doing. They just did it anyway. Holiness is not a a, a holier than thou. Holiness is a character issue. A responsibility, first of all, to God in your life. And you've got to be careful. Next point. It will be a formidable time for the church in America. But it will build strength to those who hold to the faith. Strength comes in challenge. It comes in challenge. Well, I I don't like that. I want everything to be easy. Listen to me. You're going to be a weak Christian if that's the case. If if you've never challenged anything, if you've never had challenges in your life, then you can't be strong. You can think you are, but you're not. Because, listen, anybody who works out, as buff as I am, knows this. (laughs) That when you lift weight, you are demanding that your body build muscle to handle that which you're lifting. You put more weight, you're demanding more. Count it all joy when you fall into different temptations. Knowing this, there's a knowing. You've got to know that your faith is being challenged. Proverbs chapter 3, let me just read these to you. This this will help you. You can read this every day this year. It'll help you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all, how many? All your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I know you were hoping for good news. And to be honest with you, this is good news. Okay, listen to this. This is one of the things the Lord showed me. Next next point. Lifestyle prayers 
You know what a lifestyle prayer is? Lord, I need more money. Lord, help me with this. Lord, help me with that. Lifestyle prayers are going to segue, now listen to this, into life-altering prayers. God, I give myself to you. God, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want for my life? There's a big difference in those two prayers. Doesn't mean God doesn't want to meet your needs. Doesn't mean God doesn't want to heal your body. Doesn't mean God doesn't want to work in your family. But if that's all you ever do and you never humble yourself to segue into a life-altering prayer life where God can speak to you. Listen, there have been times in my life that I, I, I promise you I would not be here talking to you tonight if I had not had that life-altering prayer time where God was able to say to me, Sam, this is what you need to do. You've got to have that in your life. You get trapped in, oh, this God, give me this. Oh, Lord, I need this. Lord, help me with this. Nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you something. <clears throat> there got to be times in your life where you're looking for life-altering prayer. Yeah. Good. And you got to make up your mind that you're going to do that. The future church will continue, and I've been saying this for several years, and it's happening. The future church will continue to separate into gospel or social camps. See, listen to me. <clears throat> the devil doesn't want to do with, away with the church. He wants it to be ineffective. And the way he wants to do that is to make you friends with everybody and love everybody and don't misunderstand what I'm saying and say that's church and, and we, can have a, we can have a big meeting and, and everybody, it doesn't matter what you believe, it's okay. That's, no, it does matter what you believe. <coughs> so you need to understand that that's happening. And you can look and say, well, God, look at that church. <coughs> Man, they're just booming. Well, what are they preaching? <coughs> I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just telling you that's, that's happening. Next one. The cries for righteousness will bring forth new leaders without personal agenda other than Christ and Him crucified. Amen. You want leaders? Look for leaders who are willing to, be, to sacrifice. Yeah. <clears throat> it's not about them. Now, I know this is going to take a minute, so just hang with me. And I may preach and talk to you a little bit more about this later. But there will not be another Constantine to validate the church to the world. Now, let me explain that to you. Because some of you don't know much about Constantine, don't know anything about Constantine. But, but Constantine was an emperor of Rome. Okay. His mother was a Christian. He became a Christian. He was in a battle. And that battle got, uh, was, was so fierce he was losing and going to lose. And he saw a cross in the sky and heard the voice, if you'll follow the cross, you'll have victory. And he did. Constantine, this, this happened around, I think it was 316, A.D., so right in that area, right there. Constantine then said, Christianity is okay. We're going to celebrate Christianity in the Roman Empire. We're no longer going to persecute the church. The church came to a place of acceptance in the government, acceptance in the community. Didn't mean everybody became Christians, but they were accepted and they were not persecuted anymore. America has enjoyed a Constantine life. Okay? I like it. Don't misunderstand me. I'm happy that, but I want to tell you something. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. You, you've got to hear this and hear what the Spirit of God says. Only the body of Christ validating Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit is going to work. There will not be another government that will validate Christianity. Only, listen to this, only the body of Christ, guess who that is? That's you. 
validating Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, hey, I thank God for our country, and I'm still praying for our country. I'm praying for revival in our country. Okay? But you've got to, you've got to understand that we've been, we've been given a free pass. If you don't believe it, go to some of these other nations, and you'll find out real quick the difference between living in America and living somewhere else. Okay? There's no government that's going to validate Jesus the way the body of Christ can validate Jesus. So you better hitch up your britches. We got work to do. The days of unprecedented awareness of God's glory are upon us. I'm telling you, I want you to listen to me. In the midst of all that is wrong, the glory of God is there. Go read Isaiah 61. I'm not going to read it tonight, but go read it. And li- gross darkness in the world, but right in the midst of that is the glory of God. The Lord said, those who seek me will be filled with my glory. I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can do that in, in a minute. One of the things in regard to, to this, the Lord spoke this to me, and I'm glad he did. He said, I will not allow the righteous to be the prey of the unrighteous. Listen, I just want to tell you something. God will defend you. He will defend you. If you're walking upright before God and you're living in the righteousness of God, God will defend you against the unrighteous. He will do it. He's not leaving us to our own ways. He will rise up and defend you. All you've got to do is make up your mind you're going to live His way. And when you live His way, He's there for you. He, listen, Becky and I have used this scripture so many times over the years, I can't even tell you how many times we've used it. He will maintain your right and your cause when you're walking upright before Him. You will not be the prey of the unrighteous. Many, next point, many will try to redefine freedom into a form that will keep them from facing the reality that true freedom can only come through Jesus. People want freedom. They're desperate for it, but they're trying to make freedom something that can only truly come through Jesus. In fact, they will push aside the freedom that comes through Jesus so they can be free. <laughs> Isn't that illogical? But that's exactly what happens. Because there are, things that hap- there are things that are attached to that freedom. Jesus said it this way, and this will, this will help you understand this. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now here it is. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's where true freedom lives. That's where you have to live your life. True freedom is a yoke with Jesus. Freedom can be a burden, but the rest of God gives you true freedom. Now, let me just say this. Forcing your freedom on any person tells you right off the bat that's not freedom. Turn your phone off. It's dinging. Probably Becky's. Don't confuse. Now, listen to this. I've said this many times, but listen. Don't confuse religious liberty with freedom in Christ Jesus. 
They're different. Thank God we've got religious freedom right now. Thank God that there are still people fighting for righteousness. Don't kid yourself. They're still fighting for righteousness. Listen to me. But don't confuse that with the liberty that you have in Christ Jesus. Because it works under any system, anywhere, any environment. So don't get them confused. So how do you know if you've slipped over in, 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 the, in the wrong place? Let me tell you the, the scripture the Lord gave me. Galatians 5.13. Now listen to what it says. You've been called to liberty, freedom in Christ. Do not use your liberty or freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But love, but through love, serve one another. Amen. You can tell real quick where your real freedom is. Are you serving? Are you walking in love? That's where it is. That's where, that's where it is. I'm going to talk about I'm going to preach on that later. So, okay. All right. Strife and confusion will turn the lost against one another. We're already seeing that happen. It, it's amazing to me to... to uh, Golly, I hate to even recommend, I'm not recommending Facebook when I say this, but I've watched this where all of a sudden somebody who's woke says something that's not woke. And the very people that love them start attacking them. I love it. I love to watch it. Because they're totally confused. They're totally confused. But now listen to this. Strife and confusion will turn the lost against one another, but the born-again believers will walk in the unity of the Spirit and create great power and wisdom. I'm telling you, we're moving toward that day right now. You can't imagine the power in this room right now. Just being here together. Now, I know we've got people watching online and you're amen and, and, and you're doing what you know is right and that's fine. But listen, there is a unity of the body of Christ that we're going to start seeing God do some phenomenal things because of that. And at the same time, the loss are just going to be biting each other, fighting each other. Next one. The undeniable, now listen to this. The undeniable transforming power of Jesus will be on full display in the new year as notables will be changed into his image. Listen, the transforming power of the new birth is the most powerful thing on earth. I'm standing here tonight after 50 some odd years living for God and I lived a life you wouldn't even believe I could possibly even be doing this today. There are people that it took them years just to trust me that it wasn't a con, that I was a preacher. But that transforming power, yes, God. Yes. when it changes someone, buddy, it lights up. It, it lights up society. It, and when it's somebody notable, yeah. it lights them up. They may not like it. They may mock them. But I'm telling you, it lights them up. Yeah. It lights them up. It's going to be on full display this coming year. Yeah. Don't doubt it. Don't question it. You're just going to have to be like Ananias. God said, Ananias, I need you. Okay, Lord, I'll do anything. You know Saul? Yeah, I know Saul. I need you to go get him. Now, Lord, now wait a minute. Hold on. You know this guy. Transforming power of God. How many of you know how, how that feels, to be transformed? I'm telling you, it's amazing. It's, it's such... I know this sounds crazy because I had a, I had a, 
a, a friend. He's gone home to be with the Lord. Now, in fact, he used to be on, on staff here. Now, in fact, his family is still involved in the church, Doug Verboys. He came to me one day. You know, we were all young back in those days in church. And he came to me. He said, he said Pastor, he said, I don't have a testimony. I said, Doug, what do you mean you don't have a testimony? He said, well, I've served God as long as I can remember. I, ne I, I, never, I know I'm born again, but, but I never had what you, I never did what you did and had God do that in my life. I said, Doug, that is the greatest testimony that any human being can have, that they've lived for God their whole lives. The only thing I do know about the timing of me getting saved was I sure recognized the difference. Woo, I recognize the difference and how it changed me and how it changed my life. There will be Nebuchadnezzar experiences that will lead to salvation. You don't know what a Nebuchadnezzar spirit is? Go read about it. Go read about King Nebuchadnezzar. You'll find out one minute he thinks he's bigger than God, and the next minute he's calling God the greatest thing ever. The Lord said this, there are Saul's out there yet to be confronted. But there are also Herod's out there. Acts chapter 12, verse 21, it talks about Herod uh, sitting on his throne in all his royal apparel. And the people were shouting he was a, that, that uh, he had the voice of a God because of what he spoke. And the Bible says in the next verse, in verse 23, the, immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God glory. And he was eaten by worms and died. Yeah, that's in the New Testament, by the way. So there are going to be Nebuchadnezzar transformations. There are Saul's out there waiting to be transformed. But there are also Herod's out there not willing to give God the glory. I'm not going to get into this tonight, so I'm going to just talk about it for just a minute. Signs and wonders will be the hallmark of those who walk upright. Listen, Isaiah 8, 18 says, listen to this. The children are for signs and wonders. We're the children. When Peter and John came back from, from the miracle that they had with the lame man and had been cross-examined by the Pharisees, and they came back and they told what happened. Do you know what the people prayed? Lord, we need signs and wonders. Lord, we need more. We need more. We need more. It, it separates us. <clears throat> the transformation separates us and signs and wonders separate us. New grace, next one, new grace will come on old gospel ways. You know, I, I love to read about old gospel meetings and the moves of God and the things that, you know, I go back and read about Azusa Street and William Seymour, and how he, he changed the world. This, this black man changed the world by, by, with Pentecost. That message went all over the world. I believe we're going to see something. That I don't know. Some things are going to happen. And I think we're going to see some amazing things. Next thing. Those who sit idly by will not see nor participate in the glory to come. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, arise and shine. Here's the way the Lord put it to me. Arise and shine and the glory will find you. The glory will find you. Next point. Just about finished. As the church puts pressure on the gospel, it will put pressure on the world. Now, I'm thinking as a pastor, okay? The more you, as an individual, talk to people about Jesus, the more you talk to them about the transforming power of God, you're putting pressure on the gospel. 
And the more you do that, the more God responds. The more he responds. You say, well, I'm waiting for God to do something. Well, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. I was talking to a lady today and, and, um, and just talking to her about the Lord. And I'm telling you, you, there was a sparkle that came into her eye because she'd been away from, not, I'm not saying she was backslidden, but it was like, oh, yeah, you're, I, need to get, I, I need to serve God. I need, there was a light that comes on. You had that capacity. You put pressure on the, on the gospel It'll work. And I'm just telling you this. Many are ready to respond to the message. Okay. I'm just about finished here. But but listen to this. Well, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm not really just about finished. But I'm going to have to finish. Many of the righteous are on the bench and inactive in God's army. He's calling them forth in this hour to be soldiers for the gospel, to stand and fight the good fight of faith. Who will answer the call, now listen to this, and set aside things of no value for the value of the cross? You've got to set some things aside. Every, every person's peace will come with a personal price. You want peace? It's going to cost you something. Pursue peace. You're going to have to lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset you. You cannot find peace in the turmoil of the world. Impossible. Not going to find it. All right, I got to get, I got to get this real quick and then I'm, I'm going to be finished. I'm just going to have to quit. All right, listen. When I was praying a few days ago, the Spirit of God began to speak to me about this. And I mean, just really, to be honest with you, out of the clear blue, I wasn't even praying about this or in this direction. But I'm telling you, the Lord started talking to me by the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Lord said. And there's a lot more to it than this. But listen, the gift of discerning of spirits must come to the forefront to guide the body of Christ. If you're not careful and you don't know how the Holy Spirit can discern spirits, you can be deceived so quickly. And you've got to have that working in your life because something can look good, something can sound good, something can smell good, but the Holy Spirit's saying, no good. I've had that happen many times in my life. Think about this, all right? Think about this. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? Peter, oh, you're the son of God. That's right, Peter. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Revelation of who he was. I'm going to build my church. A little while later, Peter pulls Jesus aside because Jesus told him, now, I'm going to, die. Okay. I'm I'm going to the cross. Uh, Jesus, can I talk to you a minute privately? Jesus, you know, that's wrong. You know, you can't, can't leave us. Jesus, you know that, that that's not right. Now think about this a minute. Jesus recognized that spirit right off the bat. Get behind me, Satan. Immediately, Jesus, how many times do you think that that spirit has tried to whisper in your ear about things? And you have got to have discerning. Now, I understand where Peter was in his life. You know, he wasn't born again. He didn't have the Holy Spirit like you and I do. But I've got to tell you something. I've watched way too many people get deceived and, and be led off by a wrong spirit. And, and this thing about being deceived is you can't talk them out of it. <clears throat> Unless the blinders are pulled off. So you, you need to ask God, God, I want discerning of spirits. Well, he'll give you the gift he wants to give you. Well, he also said you can seek the best gifts. I, I need that. 
I need that gift. And, and the body of Christ needs that gift because the season of the spirit of the Antichrist has begun. And it's a spirit of deception. And you have to have the Holy Spirit revealing to you. You've got to have it. He'll give it to you. He wants you to have it. It's not for just a few people. You can have discerning of spirits. All right, my last point. I promise you. I better not say that. Listen. When I was praying and the Lord said this to me, I got so excited. I was so, I mean, jumping up and down excited. Listen to this. God will do His best work in mankind since the crucifixion and resurrection before the end comes. Do you realize that the resurrection was just the beginning? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And He will make alive your mortal body. He is going, I'm telling you, God's greatest work is not yet been revealed. And it is the powerful working of the Holy Spirit inside the body of Christ on this earth so that the earth cannot deny the reality of God. Can I read that one more time? God will do his best work in mankind since the crucifixion and resurrection before the end comes. Think about that. His best works still to come. Best works still to come. Far and wide, the shouts of the miraculous will be heard. So, listen. Sure, there are lots of things that are that are difficult. There are lots of things that are dark. There are lots of things that are out there that are struggling, but I got good news for you. Listen to me. The good news is that in the midst of that, the glory of God is going to work. So I don't know about you, but darkness, glory of God. Hmm. But you've got to follow the right path. You've got to follow the right path. So I just want to encourage you tonight. I know this was a little bit different, and I'm going to take some of these things and jump on them and share a little bit more about them. But I'm going to tell you, we, we have got to recognize where we are and be ready for God to use us. Young and old. It doesn't matter who you are. I mean, God will use you. He wants to. The enemy wants to depress you, weigh you down, cause fear in your life. God wants you to shout. He wants you to rejoice. So you've just got to make up your mind that that that's what you're going to do and that's how you're going to live your life. And if you do that, then you're going to see God do some amazing, amazing things in your life. You just got to make up your mind. You're going to do it. Now, we're going to receive communion together. And I, I'm going to have Pastor John come up and, and share with you. And listen, don't take this lightly tonight. Take it as a time to get ready. And I believe God can do something amazing for you. Amen. John. Thank you, Pastor. Was that not incredible? Hey, listen, if you um, would have missed some points, and I'm you know, sure you can't write fast enough, we will have these on our website. We'll also have them on our app. But here's what we encourage you to do. Go to our YouTube channel, Life United YouTube channel. You can go there. We encourage you to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to 
the uh, YouTube channel because you can get messages like this one and others. You'll get notifications. And also, we uh, would love for you to like those. Every time you watch one of the messages, like that and even share that. That'll just help us uh, continue to get uh, messages like this and many other life-changing messages to the, the world that really, really needs to hear messages like this and so many others. Amen? As uh, Pastor said, uh, we uh, are going to receive communion together. So if you're at home uh, watching online, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and grab your, your, your elements that you hopefully you've already grabbed. If not, go grab them real quick. Go grab some crackers, some bread, and some juice. Just whatever you got, grab it. And also, Lake Charles, uh, so thankful that you are part of this service tonight. And we know that you've been, as here at, at Shreveport, uh, we received our, our communion uh, elements kind of all in one package as we came in. So here's what I want you to do. I'd like everybody just to uh, open that top film. This is for everybody at Lake Charles and Shreveport, the very top film. If you would mind just taking and peel that off and grab the little wafer out, out of there. You have to be a little patient with that and it can be a little tricky. But, but just grab that. And I want you to take the wafer and I want you to hold it in your hand. Um, this is so much more than just a formality. It's something so much more than just a, tradi a tradition. So I, I want to take our time. I'm not going to take a lot of time, but I do want us to take a moment and make sure that we are approaching communion in a way that honors God and can release God's power in our life. How many believe that God's power is real? And we need God's power and his power can and will be released in our life if we'll just release our faith that way. Is anybody here or maybe online that believes that? First Corinthians chapter 11, Paul is, is speaking of something that, that Jesus himself revealed uh, to Paul. Paul was not one of the originals that followed Jesus and that ever met him outside of uh, the day on the road to Damascus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, he's sharing what Jesus had shared with him about communion. It says, and when he had given thanks, speaking of Jesus, he broke it, talking about the bread that he held in his hand. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm sure none of us have ever seen anything or really even close to what it was like for a human being to hang on a cross. I'm sure none of us have ever seen anything like that. But Jesus in his life on the earth, he would have walked by many people that were hanging on the cross, that the Romans would have hung on the cross. And what you need to understand about the cross is that it was more than just torture. It was more than just the mutilation of a body. It was actually more like a slaughter. You see, the Romans did not come up with the idea of the crucifixion. It was the Persians. But the Romans just perfected it. There was a method and there was a systematic way that they took their victims and they brought them to the point of hanging on a cross. But there was a process, ladies and gentlemen, that preceded that, that was absolutely horrendous. It started with taking the victim of Je which Jesus was one. And they stripped the clothes off of their victim and it wasn't a private matter, it wasn't a private moment, it was in front of everyone. And you see, that might not be a big deal to you, but it was a really big deal to first century believers and Christians and believers that, those of the Jewish community, I'll just say it that way, because it was humiliating, it wasn't even proper for their knees to be shown. It's the reason they wore robes. It's the reason they wore long robes because it just wasn't proper for, but see the victims of the crucifixion, they were stripped completely naked. It was to go after their soul to humiliate them. If that wasn't bad enough, they would take the victim and they would put the victim's hands together and they would tie the victim's hands above their heads to a whipping post. They would take rods and they would just begin to 
beat their victim over and over and over. They would start at the lower part of their back and they would just beat them relentlessly all the way down the back of their legs. They would spend some time on the back of their thighs, their hamstrings, that area. They would just continually hit over and over and over and over and over and over again. Jesus went through that. And you know what? The Bible never records that Jesus says a word when that took place. Never said a word. That wasn't bad enough. They took what's called the cat of nine tails. It was a piece of wood about this long that had nine pieces of leather attached to it. And woven into that leather was uh, pieces of stone and, and, and glass or metal, anything sharp. And, and, and it was, it was it, again, woven into that leather. And then they would take that leather and they would soak it in water because they would use the cat of nine, nine tails to strike the back of their victims. And see, what would happen was, was that when it hit, that those cat of nine tails hit and the, the water had, had softened the leather. So, so when those, those pieces of the leather with the stone and the, the metal, it wouldn't just, would just bounce off of the victim's back. It would actually dig into their flesh and they wouldn't just hit the, their, their victim just in random places. They were very intentional as to where they hit them. They would hit them across their shoulders several times and go back and forth and, 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 and went back and forth over and over again. You know why they did that? Because they were tearing the muscles away from the bone. That's what happened to Jesus. You see, th this, this piece of bread or this wafer that you hold in your hand, it represents the body of Jesus that was beaten and bruised and broken for you. And for Jesus, it wasn't over then. After they had shredded his back, he had no muscles left in his back, he had no muscles left in his shoulders. He was beaten again relentlessly. They took him off the post and they married, made him carry as far as he could his cross to a place called Golgotha. They laid that cross down and it wasn't a smooth piece of wood, it was rugged. And could you imagine, could you imagine when they laid Jesus on that cross and they took his hands and they put spikes through his wrist. I was thinking about my grandchildren the other day, how I love to look at their little hands. Watch their little hands. I'm sure Mary watched Jesus' hands as a mom. Watched his little hands as she held him. And then there was another time in her life that she saw something else that went into right below his hands into his wrists. And those were spikes that the Roman soldiers drove into. Could you imagine what that felt like, not only to Jesus, but to watch his, for Mary to watch her son? Then they raised up the cross and the cross didn't just slide into a hole real softly. I'm sure it just jarred him. And could you imagine his shredded back against that rough timber? As it shook and it went down. But you know what? The Bible doesn't record that Jesus even cried out then. You see, his body that this bread represents was broken for you. That is the reason that we've got a promise in 1 Peter 2, 24, that says it's by his stripes we are healed. We are healed, not trying to get healed. We are healed. Is there anybody here that's thankful for the body of Christ that was broken for us? He endured it all for you. As we take this bread tonight, let's take it in remembrance, recognition, with all, and also with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving to Jesus and what he endured in his body for us. Together, let's receive this bread that represents the body of Jesus Christ.
as long as God and man have existed together, blood from a sacrifice has been the cornerstone of their relationship. You can go back in Genesis 3 and you can just start working forward and you can see that all through the old covenant to present. So as we prepare this evening, as we carefully remove the foil, I want you to think about this. When Jesus was beaten, his blood was shed. Lots of blood was shed. We know that he didn't die actually from blood loss. He would have uh, died from asphyxiation. He would have suffocated. That's how he would have died. But nevertheless, there was blood that was shed from his body. But you know, the shedding of the blood was not the most important part. It's what happened after, what happened with the blood and what Jesus did with his own blood after that really matters. It's what really counts. You see, the Roman soldiers didn't see it. Nobody really saw what I'm about to describe, but, but God saw it and that's what's important. For generations, God's people would bring sacrifices to the temple for generations. Year after year, they would have to bring blood. They would have to bring animals that were sacrificed. And the Levitical priesthood would take very ceremonially and they would, they would take the blood from animals and they would go into the Holy of Holies and they would, or they would present this blood on behalf of not only themselves but also for the sins of God's people. Over and over and over and over, it happened for generations. But see, there was something that happened after the shedding of the blood on the cross that's very powerful because Hebrews 9, 12 gives a picture of it. It says that Jesus came into the presence of God, but he didn't bring this blood from goats or calves, Hebrews 9, 12 says. It says that he brought his own blood and he presented it to the Father. And you know what God did? God said, that is enough. That blood that has been shed, that blood that has been presented by my son, my son's blood is enough and not one more sacrifice will ever have to happen again. And the Bible says that because of that blood that was shed, that was offered, the greatest thing about this is that it was accepted by God and said the sins of humanity are forever paid for. It's presented it was as it was there that we have, and because of that, that we have eternal redemption. I'm just amazed every time I think about how John Welch has been forgiven, that old things have passed away and everything's become new. Because not just because the blood was shed, but was because it was accepted by God. Once and for all. Let's receive this juice that represents the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for his body that was broken for us. We're so grateful for the blood that wasn't just shed, but it's most importantly, it was accepted by you that because of these things, we call you our father and we are your children. And for that, we are forever grateful. And Father, I also thank you right now for the healing work that you're doing right now in people's bodies. Those that are dealing with this coronavirus, we say, it's by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed. Those that are, have, have had the diagnosis of cancer, we say it's by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. We thank you for healing right now. Those that have been dealing with migraines, we thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the perfect work because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in our bodies. And we thank you for this in the matchless and powerful name of Jesus Christ. 
And everybody that agrees is a great big amen. Praise God. You can stand if you like. We're going to be praying in just a minute. But as we close out before we pray, we wanted to sing this song, which you, most of you know. It's God praying over you and speaking over you. It's called the blessing. And as we sing this, let your heart be prepared. Think about, as Pastor John so wonderfully just explained and described what God did for us, what Jesus did for us. And let that just resonate in your heart. And it's not over. God wants to continue to bless you. So let your hearts be ready to come before Him now and ask of Him. He wants to bless you right now. children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you Yes. 
You know, when it comes to a new year, we always talk about, you always hear about New Year's resolutions, what you can what you can do differently, or maybe jumpstart a, 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 a new hobby or something along those lines. Uh, here at Life United, we're all about taking next steps. And for some of you, that may be taking new steps. Uh, and a step could be just, you know, maybe reading your Bible more or daily because maybe you haven't been or, or, or getting more of a daily prayer life. Uh, steps in your walk with the Lord can be numerous and it could take, I could take so much time explaining those steps to you. But one simple step that you could do right now is just by liking uh, this video and also hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell to get notifications so that you can stay up to speed, up to date with all the messages uh, and all the content that we put out on YouTube because there's so many powerful messages that you can go back and look on, but there's also more information and things that you can get. Uh, the Holy Spirit may speak to you to who knows what message that you'll find in our channel. So make sure you like that. Make sure uh, you hit the like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us as we continue on this incredible, powerful journey uh, that is our Life United YouTube channel. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for tuning in.